From the Toronto Star, I'm Adrian Schoen, and this matters. Body Break! Body Break! With Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod. Hal, what do you want for lunch today? Oh yeah, that's some good nostalgia right there. Because if you grew up in the 1990s or watched any Canadian TV that decade, you know Body Break. The episodes were a little over a minute long, usually during commercial breaks. They're hosted by Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod, a couple who dished out tips on fitness, exercise, and the importance of a good diet. And this was the part that I loved. They were usually rocking these sweet windbreaker jackets too. Whether you're at home or on vacation, swimming is great and nearly an injury-free sport since your muscles and joints are supported by the water. And having strong shoulder muscles will enable you to swim a little longer. The episodes were earnest, but also honest and relentlessly positive. Hal and Joanne were like your favorite gym teachers who pushed, but never judged you. But there's another thing that set body break apart. Hal is black. Joanne is white. In the late 80s and 90s of Canadian TV, seeing two people of a different race on screen at the same time was pretty rare. And this week, Hal connected with Canadians again after he released a video about why him and Joanne really created Body Break. You think that Body Break was started because of fitness. Well, it wasn't. It was started to combat racism. That was the number one reason that we started Body Break, Joanne and I. He goes on to tell stories of the racism he's faced, of a job at TSN being taken away from him because of the color of his skin. I got a phone call and he said, sorry, but the higher up said, because I'm black and they already had Mark Jones, who's now with ESPN and has been there for many years, because they already have a black reporter, they don't want to have two black reporters. Another time, during a commercial shoot, a director told Hal why he decided to put a white actor between him and a young actress who was also white. And he said, well, and he laughed. <laughs> he said, well, the client really didn't want you next to the white girl because, you know, God forbid, somebody might think you're with the white girl. And then he chuckled and laughed and then turned. Those are just a couple parts of it. You should really watch the whole video if you haven't. Hal's story has touched a nerve, especially in the Canadian media industry. Because like many parts of society, media companies are wrestling with its structural and systemic racism, facing questions about how racialized people are often the exceptions in a newsroom, how stories of black, indigenous, and people of color often aren't being told, and how when they are, it's often through a tokenized or stereotyped lens. Today, we're talking to Hal Johnson, one half of the Body Break duo. Him and Joanne are still making videos and giving fitness tips. We're talking to him about how racism drove them to create what they're best known for and what diversity and representation in media really means in 2020. Hey Hal, thanks for making the time. Oh, my pleasure. So, you know, your video has been part of the conversation now that we're all having about racism, especially anti-black racism in Canada and within the media industry too. When you put out that video, did you think it would have this kind of reaction? Absolutely no idea. I thought it was going to be a little different than our, call it off brand of what Body Break is, people know us as for fitness and health and really kind of revealing to people that they didn't realize that for 32 years, We've been giving you a little bit of medicine of anti-racism along with the fitness and health, and you didn't even know that you were taking that. So that was what we tried to do. It wasn't by accident that we had persons with disabilities or had people of different races in our body break episodes. That was all strategic. That was all thought through. It was all purposeful. So that was why body break was created to break down barriers. But we thought it'd be better to to not hit somebody over the head because it's better to affect their heart and their mind rather than try to push them to look, hey, this is this is what we should do type of thing. That the message of anti-racism really was in plain view the whole time. It was in plain view to those who were being oppressed by the, the racism. You mm. always knew it was there, you know, but it's how do you work around it? How do you become a chameleon? And a lot of black people have to become chameleons or a lot of people have 
on a, a racist. It's not just black people. You have to adapt to your environment. And regardless of your race in terms of whatever the dominant race is, indigenous people have to do that. You know, Asian people, you adapt to the culture. Mm-hmm. And that's what interesting. I bring up his name, Don Cherry. I would always think, you know, until he was off the air, we're not really, we really haven't seen the light in terms of that, because that was really a, so a lot of the things that, you know, Don would say were very, well, you uh, have a spocky and eyebrow to what he says. You people love, you, you, they come here, whatever it is, you love our way of life, you love our milk and honey, at least you could pay a couple of bucks for poppies or something like that. Certainly, I, I looked at that and, and I would never watch him. I just turn him off. Right. Of the very many problematic things that he said over the years. Yeah. And that's why it was just interesting how we kind of wrapped our arms around him as a Canadian treasure. But yet it was I thought he was very divisive in what he would say about anybody. I was brought up that if somebody says something against a Jewish person or against an East Indian person, that whatever nationality they might be or race, you stick up for that person. And so it was a lot of kind of name calling and calling other people out. And I just didn't agree with that. It's not how I was raised. Why do you think your video has gotten this kind of reaction? Do you feel like there's something different about this moment in how we're talking about racism? Certainly. And I felt, I don't know what it was. It was a sixth sense that I had that it was the right time. I can't tell you. I just, all of a sudden on a Sunday, I... I was talking to a couple of shooters, a couple of camera guys up in uh, Collingwood, and we were talking, and I said, I think I feel right to do something. And these guys were shooting a documentary about Joanne and I and uh, about Body Break. And they said, yeah, why don't you come up, and we'll shoot some stuff and ask you about the racism stuff. And I said, okay, can I shoot a little quick, you know, five-minute thing about just I want to say something on camera. And literally, as I'm driving up to Collingwood and, you know, uh, heading up north to my uh, cottage, I thought about what I was going to say. And so it was really unscripted, just kind of literally rolled off the tongue of what occurred and what happened. And I guess people kind of saw the authenticity of it. Also, I think kind of more importantly, they, it was, they grew up thinking one thing and all of a sudden and door number two is revealed and they go, Oh my God, I didn't realize that's what they were trying to tell me over these years. But subliminally, Perhaps I get it now. And and I think that's why people reacted so positively. Like, it's just been yeah. incredible, the positivity that people uh, have come through. And, you know, it's funny. I, I don't look at Twitter that often. That's probably good for your health, by the way. That's probably good for your mental health. But, and I shouldn't say this now, but rarely does anybody throw a shade. I mean, rarely does anybody, you know, come down on us as in a negative way. Um so we've been really lucky. <laughs> we've missed the uh, the negative parade on uh, on Twitter. Hal, you know, I also thank you for your honesty in the video because, again, I think that's what so many people have connected with is that it came from a really honest place. And, you know, I watched your video several times where you recount several racist incidents that happened to you, the racist things that were said to you, from the TSN incidents to the commercial. And he said, yes, we'll, we'll take it. However... The problem is uh, you're black and the young lady, I remember him saying, the young lady is white. And so we don't think the Canadian public is ready for a black and white couple together. And part of what stuck with me was you seem to remember every detail, that you remember specific dates. And as a person of color as well, I think I may know your answer to this, but why do you think that those moments have stuck with you so many years later? They simply get seared in your in your brain. They're turning points. They're things that you simply can't forget. And I I really don't. When I started the do the video, Mark Jones and I just finished talking to his brother Paul Jones on Sportsnet. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking of Mark Jones. I wasn't even thinking of Jack Hutchinson. Those names were not even in the reservoir. But when I was telling the story, it just came out. It just, you know, June 8th of 1988 is a day that Joanne and I often talk about. In fact, we celebrate it. That's the birth of body break. And so we, yeah. we have a cake on that day. <laughs> so that day is kind of cemented in our, in our minds, certainly. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, 
I guess on the one hand, it's been extremely rewarding and I'm extremely hopeful. On the other hand, I hope that this doesn't stop. I hope that there is change. And and I I would like to be part of that in a positive way. I'm not an expert, but I'm an expert in my life. And I know what I've gone through. And hopefully I can have empathy for others who are going through things. Well, I think, you know, the experiences that you've talked about and the work that you and Joanne have done have in a lot of ways laid the path for people of color in media, like myself, like many others, um, because especially during that time in the 90s, you and Joanne were really one of the first people on Canadian television showing different kinds of representation that we generally didn't see at that time. Yeah, and, and it's like when I I grew up, I never saw black golfers. I watched the Masters and I would see caddies and I didn't think I was allowed to golf. So that was something that I wanted to to change, uh, that little kids at home could see somebody out skiing, golfing, cycling, doing all these activities that you didn't think you could do. And so that's I wanted to show kids at home. And fortunately, we played a lot on YTV and, and on TSN quite a bit. It succeeded our expectations. And I guess we're looking at, saying, okay, what's next? How can I help? You know, Joanne and I are looking out there to, to help. I mean, that conversation is is happening right now in Canadian media about how Black, Indigenous, and, and voices of people of color have often been left out in representation that our presence can be tokenized. I know this is a bit of a big question, but what do you think Canadian media needs to do in 2020 to, to make more lasting change? They need to get people into the C-suites. They make people in decision-making positions. That's where it changes. In front of the camera, that's one thing, but behind the camera is, is more important. It's like having the players in the field, but your, your general manager and the owner are not representative. So you've got to have the people behind the cameras and, and making the decisions. Well, they will be more reflective, and they will direct the people who are in front of the camera, of, okay, this is the story that we're going to cover, or here's the angle that we're going to do it in. That's where it becomes, that's where the change really, really, really becomes uh, evident. I think I speak for a lot of Canadians, a lot of young people who grew up in the 90s, that you and Joanne were part of the soundtrack of our childhoods, that you guys were constant. We got so many health and, and fitness tips from you. In 32 years of body break, what are you proudest of? Our longevity. And I'm proud that uh, Joanna and I are together and that we've made a small impact on a positive impact on Canadians. Hal, thank you so much for sharing your story and, and for all these years of body break. Well, thank you very much. And as uh, I would say, until next time, keep fit and have fun. Okay, that's pretty cool that he just signed off like that. Well, that's Hal Johnson from Body Break, talking about the racism that he faced in the Canadian media industry, and why those same questions about systemic racism have as much urgency today in 2020. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. This Matters is hosted and produced by me, Adrian Chung, Sabah Aitizaz, and Raju Muthar. Produced and mixed by Sean Pattinen, and our director of programming is J.P. Fozo. Our show theme music is by So Called, and our episode music is by Mike DeAngelis. We want to hear what stories matter to you. Please send us comments, questions, or ideas to thismatters at thestar.ca. Please consider supporting the journalism the Toronto Star Newsroom does at thestar.com. And don't forget to subscribe to This Matters on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's talk soon. <laughs>